Hey, it hasn't started yet, so we're now. All right. Oh. So here we go, my friends. Um, who thought the lab was a lot better than uh, the day before was Max? Raise your hand. Yes. The lab. The lab, like, ultimately, how hard is calorimetry? It isn't that hard, and I apologize that I made a couple mistakes. Um, but I grade your tests, so I know for a fact you make mistakes too. Right? Yeah. All right. Let's discuss yesterday. Um, I have it on the board, but I guess I better not do it on the board because no one would know what I'm doing. So here we go. Um, most of you, let's well, let's hear your numbers again for your heats. Was it 36? Yeah, like 32, 31. 35, 35. Yeah, 36, 36, 36, 36, 36, 36, 36, 36, 36, 36, 31, 32, 32, another 36. Let's call this good. Someone that's fast at math, find me the average here. You go, my friend. Um, but I grade your tests, so I know for a fact you make mistakes too. Right? Yeah. All right. Let's discuss yesterday. Um, I have it on the board, but I guess I better not do it on the board because no one would know what I'm doing. So here we go. Um, most of you, let's well, let's hear your numbers again for your heats. Was it 36? Get like 32, 31. All right. Let's call this good. Someone that's fast at math, find me the average here. What's the unit here? Kilojoules per one mole. Jerickson. So here we go, my friends. Um, who thought that the lab was a lot better than uh, the lab? Like, ultimately, how hard is calorimetry? Grade your tests, so I know for a fact you may. Um, I have it on the board, but I guess. I so here we go. Test at math, find me the average here. Yeah. All right. These values are easily looked up in one five or something like that. So. So here we go, my friends. Um, who thought that the lab was a lot better than uh, the day before is math? The lab, like, ultimately, how hard is calorie mistakes? Um, but I grade your tests, so I know for a fact you make mistakes too. Right? Yeah. All right. Let's guess I better not do it on the board because no one would know what I'm doing. So here we go. Eats. Was it 36? Yeah, like 36, 36 31, 36, 32, 32, 34. 34.5 sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. What's the unit here? <laughs> Kilojoules per one mole, right? Jerickson. All right. All right. Thirty-four point five. All right. If you research this on the internet, you will. These values are easily looked up in tables, um, or four point one five or something like that. It was so. Uh, point one. Does that mean that we're terrible at science? No. Yeah. no. For mole. You okay with that? So we all. What did you say, Bryce? I said it at the end of the hour. Yeah. We lost. All right, that looks more like a t-shirt today, but whatever. So, Don't worry, we're not making fun of people. It's easier to stir when it's upside down. It is, but you have to well, It's okay. I'm it sorry. It much. Uh, I'm sure that you, you know, I'm not, yeah, I have no problem with that. Thank you. Whatever. You okay with that? Like, it's exactly. Minus. This was months ago. I love the half-life of chemistry. O minus A divided by A. It was our observed minus the accepted divided. You okay with that? Yeah. All right, so the efficiency will be the same thing. We averaged, and we were all pretty close. That proves our process 4.5-ish. What was it supposed to be? 44.15. Divided by 44.15 times 100. Down there. So you get roughly... 10, and you get divided out. All right, negative 21% error. Or, 29%. No matter what mass we added or what volume of water we had, move on. Um, do you remember we talked about a reaction might re or increase the pressure? You okay with that? All right, constant. What we really measure is just a change in internal energy. For all intents and purposes in AP chemistry, it's not us. This is a yeah. math class. Uh, that says bomb calorimeters because I say it does, right? Negative C cal. 
There is no easier math equation. Reaction is equal to some constant, uh, well, negative of that constant times calorimeter constant. They'd have to do reaction after reaction, and sorry, just like we had to do to figure out that we had a 79% efficiency. Just multiply it by the change in temperature. <laughs> Are you okay with that? Not super difficult math. Test are about one in a million. The odds of getting a lab exactly like the one we did yesterday is about one lab. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me know. Um, I usually worry about other people. If a student wants to come, all these Biggest problem. I you okay with that? So if you're in here right now, I have problem, like you won't do the last day after school, I'll just review that and I'll be able to add or remove. I think it will help me. <laughs> you don't stress me out. That might sound mean on your A. You want a 99 uh, because you, start great. you like in a public forum to encourage comments. You should not. Look, when I was, I was a very good student in high school, yeah. mm -hmm. this is on video. First class in my high school career, I didn't really care. Didn't. Um, and he was getting towards the very end, I'm like, man, he's scared. He's like, he called, he said, the last five people need to visit with me. And I walk up to him, and he's like, uh, Mr. Day, like, that'd be a good idea. Um, anyway, that did help. Something you've never heard of that you may or may not put a hard return in between our notes instead of just going down the next line. Here, delta H. For every reaction in which we are interested. No, H came from enthalpy a long time ago, and I'm sure enthalpy was put together by someone in Russia, so it must have something to do with that, I would guess. Um, all right. However, we can estimate delta H using delta H values that are published and the properties of enthalpy. All right. So, what we're saying is we could do calorimetry for every single reaction ever and come up with some numbers and, and do all that math, or we could look in a table and use our brains to figure out what they are. So we could take, and you're going to have to do this on your exam, you can take multiple equations, or reactions, I should say. Uh, better not get too far away. Um, good thing I look back. We can take multiple reactions, um, use our uh, chemistry thinking skills, their delta H values, and come out with a value for a reaction that actually wasn't even listed in the truth. That might seem a little bit impossible right now, but just follow my logic. Here we go. Um, maybe you don't want to talk to that. Maybe this will talk to it. All right. Hess's law states that if a reaction is carried out in a, sorry about the import again, series of steps, delta H for the overall reaction will be equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps. There's about five laws in chemistry that seem like they're no-brainers. Oh, hey, just pretend these are good-looking stairs. All right, so all Hess's law is saying, let me try and help you get this. It's saying that if I jump from here to the top, so that's just one jump, right? The change in energy will be equal to if I walked up all three of them. Now it's just going to be like their body part. Okay, I'm sorry. Are you okay with that? We're all right with that on a set of stairs. If you jump three, you're still the same height above where you initially started. Are you okay with that? So Hess's law is just going to say that some chemical reactions, like A goes to B, and then B goes to C, and eventually we end with D, he's saying that each individual part would be the same in energy if A just went straight to D. Raise your hands if you're with me. Okay, that, that's not that hard. All right, this is the scientific law of no duh. 
and there's about five guys that have name laws that all say the same thing, and that it is pretty obvious, doesn't it? Now, it's chemistry. Oh, the battery's dead, that's why. Was everyone just in the all the time? Really mocking. Um, they're peers of already looking at science like we do. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Like to others of technology development. And remember, you guys say tests, you know that, right? You're going to love it. You know science is an evolving process. Okay? That science builds on itself. Okay? Just because right, you say, hey, Newton's ideas were great, but now we have some more technology. This is, but at the same time, it was in a very important con conceptual idea back then. All right, now, like I was about to say, it's chemistry, so we take easy English and we complicate it by CH4. Ooh, let's review. I do this every time. CH4 is a what? Louder? Hydrocarbon. Okay, I might not even mark the charting now. It's a hydrocarbon, which means it has a naming process. MEPB, so MEPB, then remember geometry. What was the M? Meth. Meth. So this is meth ain. Oh. Who does that sound familiar to anyone? Two days ago we did propane. Please make me feel like my job is changing your lives better forever. Okay. Why would you want me to lie to you? Oh. <laughs> oh man, it's fine. From now on, your tests are graded exactly how they should be. No more sixty percent given. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, methane is going to make carbon dioxide and water. Are we okay with that? You know what? It turns out that this has what we call an intermediate and everything happens. All right? It has to like poof, poof, and everything happens. See the difference there? You with me? All right. In almost every reaction, there's really, there's steps of the reaction that happen as the process goes. Now, chemically wise, they cancel each other out, but Enthalpically, I just made that up, but it sounds great to me. All right, they uh, they do have steps. So all we're saying is that the first process, I guess it's here, whatever. There's three processes here, like there were three steps here. One, two, three. It's equal to if you jump from A to D. Complicated because there's all these delta H's. There's all this half stuff that we don't like, but it doesn't matter. It all adds up to be the same in the long run. All right. So, um, ooh, because delta H is a state function. What's a state function reviewing from three days? What? Perfect. It doesn't matter how we got there. We're just there. Right? Like Disneyland. It sucks to drive to Disneyland. It's cooler to fly to Disneyland. It might even be cooler to like go on a boat to Disneyland. I don't know. But once you're at Disneyland, no one cares. No one cares. You're at you. Disneyland. You're at Disneyland. And it's the happiest place on earth. <laughs> Unless you're the parent that has to pay for it. <laughs> you got me on that oh, one right there. Fun. Kid won't eat most stuff, but I'll <laughs> um, all right. So, state function. Disneyland. Are we okay with that? We don't care how we got there, we're there. Since function, the total entropy change.
or the steps of the reaction, I'm here. Enthalpy just cares. Enthalpy. It only cares that I'm on the top stair. Right? It doesn't care actually if I came downstairs to get there or upstairs to get there or jumped to get here or went up two steps, down one step, up three steps, down one step, and up one more. It doesn't care. It's here. <laughs> all right? So, all of that, we're going to use Hess's Law. All right. Now, we can't really do Hess's Law until we also tie it to enthalpy of formation, which, if you were paying attention three or four days ago, I already did on accident, and then I rewinded and said, hey, I wasn't supposed to go that far yet. Is that a beautiful box? OCD people everywhere. I like it. Okay. <laughs> enthalpies of formation. Does anyone remember where we find enthalpies of formation? Oh, yeah. In tables. Who likes problems where I already give you the numbers? That is almost everybody. Right. Okay, that is everybody. A number given is easier than a number calculated any day. <coughs> Let's call that Davidson's Law. <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> That's a no-duh, but it needs a last name attached to it. So one more time. A number given is easier than a number calculated. I don't remember how it ended, but it was cool. I probably should, but it, I don't think it will help me maintain peace in the world. I don't know. Right. Oh, what right. if like Kim Jong un is like sitting there and he's like I don't have I don't have to like feed my people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where this is going, but we better be done. Alright. So here we go. An enthalpy of formation or delta H F it usually looks like this. Delta H with a little F down here. You okay with that? Okay, nothing solid was inhaled right there, hopefully. <laughs> right? Uh, right? Now, um, this is probably negative 495. It, 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 the number doesn't matter. But all we're saying is that the heat of formation is just simply the values when we make stuff. So I have a question. What do you think delta HF would be for carbon? It would be zero. How come? Because it's already carbon. It's already carbon. Did we have to make carbon? No. no, we dug it out of the ground. It was already carbon in whatever. their pure form. 
Ooh, I don't know if I like pure form either. Did you write that word yet? Yeah. It's okay. Pure is fine, but really it's like, it's going to sound redundant, but we should put elemental form. So like they're, they're like natural state? Natural state. So if I found oxygen is a liquid, mm, that's extremely hard to find because you got to cool it down to almost zero degrees Kelvin. That's not how we breathe it in, right? So it would have an enthalpy of formation. All right, if we find gaseous carbon, that took a lot of heat to make, right? Could you drink liquid oxygen? If you wanted to die instantly, probably. <laughs> like, it would freeze everything that oh, yeah, it touched in your body. Yeah. You probably wouldn't die, but you'd be in a lot of hurt. I can just get my stomach pumped. It'll be okay. <laughs> your stomach would probably shatter. <laughs> I really think you'd be in a lot of trouble. Let's try it tomorrow. <laughs> um, all right. I know Tyler. I know Tyler. Tried I'd imagine that. liquid. Wow. <laughs> all right. I'll just leave that. Thanks. Well, I did think you were a senior, so. <laughs> you can't yeah. Leave. Then we can right. just leave. Oh. Appreciate it today. Here we go. You're so. Welcome. Thanks. Bud. Now, number one really does kind of flow into number two. So, the. State, that's the key, of, uh, oh, this will be fun to write. The state of matter matters. And I'm going to put like double exclamations there. Meaning, I mean it. Because the state of things will determine its energy. Are you okay with that? Yeah. So hot water has more enthalpy than cold water because it's hotter and enthalpy is directly related to, starts with an H, heat. Are you okay with that? Yeah. All right. So there's probably more laws. Leave a couple of lines in your notes if you're taking notes. We'll come back to those later. All right. Here we go. Standard enthalpies of formation. Now you need to have all these memorized for your next test. Just JK in. When you took solid carbon plus gaseous hydrogen and you formed C2H2. It's really, I mean, it's simple. Are you okay with this? Raise your hands if you're okay with this. Okay. Tyler, did you raise your hand? All right. Next. All right. This is going to look a lot more complicated than it needs to. Why is there Well, it's, it's whenever I write report from power.
Hey, Parker, this is a what? Hydrocarbon. This is a hydrocarbon. Someone besides Parker, tell me its name. Propane, because M E P. Right, P B. Then remember geometry: methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl. Wait, so, so that's the acetylene, the wonderful lead slide. Acetylene? Acetylene. Don't even ask me about acetylene right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why would you try and apply rules I taught you to other things? <laughs> You're fired. All right, it's because acetylene is its name, like water. But water's not water, it's dihydrogen monoxide. So it's really So C2H, what was it? Two. Two. All right, in case you care, ME, so it's ethyl. All right, so it's ethyl, that's the E part. And then, it's a little bit weird. This structure has a triple bond in between the C's and then an H. And by the way, this gives off a ton of energy because we're going to sever a triple bond when we're welding. That's a lot of energy, right? We need a lot of energy because we need a lot of heat. All right, so if it has a triple bond, it means it's an I, Y, N, E, or an I. So this is technically named F, I. But no one calls it that. It'd call it by its common name, which is acetylene. Okay. Okay. It's that was a good question. Um, but now, you might start to appreciate, and I'm not looking for. Uh, well, maybe I am. I don't care. You might appreciate how tricky to teach this class is, because I will teach you a rule, and we will follow that rule, and follow that rule, and then we don't. Cause. <laughs> right, like, why do they call it acetylene? I don't know, because someone called it acetylene a long time ago, and they've always used that in the welding instead of, what do we just call it, ethylene. Okay, because, because chemistry is fun. All right, CO2 plus H2O, balance this puppy. I know you know what to do for a combustion reaction, because I trained you as good as Pavlov's dogs. Don't say it out loud. Protection Act? Is that like I tip up for Protection Act? Oh, do I get extra credit? You should. I know my proximity control blows right now, but I'm tied to this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Someone besides Justin Murray. Um, what are the numbers that go here? Two, ten, six, eight. Two, ten, six, eight. On the slide, reduce the moment. Okay, well, we're going to reduce them all in half. Kate, if you do not have it, you're laughing. Mine like 100. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm going to get it. I'm going to You got 100 right here? That's a, I thought it was, but I'm like, oh, oh. that's an option. Okay. Can you do 1, 5, 3, 4? Yeah, that's what we're going to do right now. Oh, all right. Okay, so ready for the big but? But! We don't do this for two moles of this. I made you write it in your notes. We always do it for one. So, good call. Let's cross these out. So, maybe you're wondering, well, why did Davidson always tell me to start with a two if all we're going to do is reduce? Because it's easier. Because it makes it super duper easier in the long run. All right? Because if you don't start with a two, if you end up with an odd number here, life's really hard. And you don't like hard. Well, you're an AP, and you do. All right. So this is what we would do, my friends. To find delta H 
for this reaction. Now, delta H RxN is different than delta H of F. Tell your lab partner why right now. This chemistry sucks. Why? Probably. Because I said so. This is a reaction. Not really. Parker, why? Okay. Okay. Parker nailed it. He never comes on time, but he's still smart. Um, look right here. The key is, and I'm sure most of you got it. Two things. That's ironic. Is that a single product? It isn't. Okay? So right off the bat, this is a reaction between things that are forming products, not a product from the second thing. Are these just pure elements? Nope. No. This is, but that is not. So delta H for the reaction is the overall enthalpy change for the entire reaction to produce carbon dioxide and water. But we're going to use Hess's law to say that we can take the delta H of formation for each thing to come for, uh, to figure out, I should say, the overall change in enthalpy for the entire reaction. I don't like the way you're looking at me. Are you with me? Okay. Levi, are you with me? Okay. Yes, they don't really know. All right. Hess's law said if we know the steps, we can find the whole, or if we know the whole, we can find the steps. You with me on that? Yeah. So what we're going to say, I'll get you tied in just a second. We're going to say we don't know what it would be to just jump all the way. But I do know the chemistry that made that, that made that, and then made that, and that made that. So if I have all the parts, I can get all the whole. So you're, you know those out of the table. I know it from a table. All right. So let's look this up. Oh, Tyler. Yes. So what would be the um, function for this? Everything, honestly. Um, so atoms, were you here the other day? No, not like that function, like oh. the math equation. Oh. This is a very It's going to be probably right. Yep, right there in our language. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Fire! Okay, that's supposed to be. Let me write this. Delta H will equal. It's not an E. It's the sum. Oh, that's what I want. Of n products. I I didn't even do that right. And delta H products minus the sum of. M, I'll explain all this in a second. Delta H reactants. That's an N. What are those things that are in between the products and the first E? N delta H. N delta H products minus M. Every time I draw a triangle, I draw an H. Let's chop this up. I don't know why I walked up here. All right. Sum. Sum just means I add stuff together, right? Yeah. All right. Then, N. N just means, I, I can't do it from here. It makes me dizzy. <laughs> uh, let's come back. So, what does N mean? Uh, does he take him or not? The stoichiometric coefficient. Yes, the stoichiometric coefficient. Thank you, nerd. What does that really mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you read the PowerPoint. Oh, I, I, mm, uh -huh. I read ahead. It was going to beat me up in the hall later. It means if I had five O2s, it just means this number. So I'm going to multiply all these values that I find by their coefficients. Does that make sense? And it, yes. What? Why are we finding this 
Well, we're going to multiply the O2s and the C3HHs, or 8, 8, whatever. And we're going to add those together. There's the sum. Okay, so N, of, and we have products minus initial. Do you remember? I feel like half of today is a review of stuff we've taught. Delta means final minus initial, right? Look how this applies. What do we end our reactions with? Our products. What do we initially have? Reactants. We will always follow this rule in science. It's always N minus um, start. Okay. Let's, let's chop this up way back here, and it'll hopefully all go together. Wow, not that far. Okay. So, we have this balance. So, the first thing, as always in chemistry, you got to balance a reaction. So, if you wondered why on earth... Oh, man, my computer's way behind. Does that look like what we see up there, Levi? No. No. <laughs> Enjoy it, seniors. Um, all right. So, I uh, lost track. Whatever. So, we go to our table and we find the value of the heat of formation uh, for propane. So, it's got to be on here somewhere. C388. It's not on here. Uh, oh, it's on the right side? Right middle. Right middle. Oh, there it is. C3H8. To me, it should have been with these. Don't you think that would have made some sense? It is. Thank you so much. All right. And what is waters? Water is negative two point eight five All right. Now there are decimals, but I'm choosing to ignore them. We okay with that? Yeah. Good answer. Thank you for coming today. All right. Now this is. There is nothing hard about this except for most of you are not going to grow up to be accountants. So it's all. waters, and I have to multiply that by negative 285. Are you okay with that? Now, what I would do, I would just bracket this whole thing, and then I minus it. And then I have the sum, and I'm going to bracket this again. Now I have my reactants, which will be easier because one's a pure element, So, and one of them's a 1. So I have 1. 1 times, and I know that we don't need to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway for convention purposes. 1 times negative.
you're going to subtract. Oh, ooh, ugly. All right, I can do this one in my head too. Minus negative 103. And now I'm off to the races. Negative 1181 plus negative 1140. This is really becoming a bigger negative number, right? What's that number? Negative 2, 3, all right, and I am minusing a minus, so I'm really going to add 1 to that, right? And what do I get? Oh. <laughs> Woo -wee. I propose to you that this is not hard, but it's really tricky. That would be your final answer? That would be the final answer. Final answer. And really, what would we just find? That's the kilojoules. What word would you say? Added or released? Added. Released. Released. Oh, yeah. Negative exothermic. Energy is coming out. <clears throat> it is the kilojoules released for every one mole of propane. So not the... Tyler is even talking about it, but what application would this have? Well, this is going to cook my. A calorie, you know, remember? Oh, you got it right. I'm feeling burning for one gram. All right. If if the energy needed to raise one gram of water, oh, one yeah. degree Celsius, right? So, 44 grams of propane can heat up. What's this number? Nine million. Nine million let's just round it there grams of water one degree Celsius. That's a lot of energy, is it not? And what are we using this energy for? Barbecue. Cook your hamburger. Your hamburger is not this heavy. On the Bunsen burners. <laughs> you know, I've never cooked food. Okay, absolutely. There's your hot shower. It came from a little bit different. What did you? What do you burn uh, for your natural gas? Anyone know? We've said it before. Nope. nope. I don't know that. It's just. Who's okay with this? Okay, Monday. We're going to review. Because there's only one little sliver left. It's called fuel in foods. So that was hard for me to... Fuel in foods. Yep. And it's not even on the test. It's not anything. It's just interesting. Okay? Um, we will try our best to make sure that this is perfect. But I need you to do me a favor. I need you to do all of your homework problems.
homes so that if there's a problem, we can fix it before it's too late. Okay. Chapter 5 is not very hard, but don't underestimate it. All right.